On December the 8th, 2021, the YouTuber Totally Not Mark uploaded a video talking about how Toei Animation removed over 150 videos from his channel, seemingly for copyright related reasons. These videos ranged from Dragon Ball and One Piece anime reviews, analysis videos, and even some drawing videos that shouldn't fall into any copyright trouble, but apparently in Toei's eyes it does. I highly recommend you go watch his video first if you haven't already. It's a bit of a bummer to watch, and you will be heartbroken to hear this man's work be taken away from him, but I think it's necessary to get a clearer picture of this clearly unfair situation. I personally have not seen any of his videos in question, but I have definitely heard a lot of good things from him. Based on how he directs himself in the video, it's obvious that he keeps things professional and tries his best to follow the rules of fair use as closely as he and his team can, something that Toei Animation clearly doesn't care about. When making this video, I was thinking about just saying the same things that everyone already knows, such as saying that getting 150 videos taken down for no reasonable reason is complete bullshit, and Totally Not Mark doesn't deserve this treatment at all. I still stand by that, and I fully support people fighting back against Toei so that Mark can get his videos back. This is something that should never happen with transformative work that is in no way stealing an intellectual property. This is especially so when the transformative work is journalistic in nature by offering critique or analysis, something that I find more valuable than the average video. All of these things are obvious, and you don't need me to repeat those things to you to validate your opinion, especially when there are much more relevant and popular people than me that are saying the same. I actually want to take the Totally Not Mark situation as a jumping off point to dive a little deeper into other questions. The more I thought about this topic, the more I started to ask myself what I or anyone else would do in a situation like this. So please humor me for a little bit as I reflect and brainstorm with hypotheticals and what if scenarios about Totally Not Mark's issues with Toei and what this could mean for the rest of us. I apologize if this video ends up being a bit of a bummer too because I don't have any of the answers that you're seeking to fix any of these issues. These are just my thoughts, you can take them or leave them. I would like to kick off the discussion with a question. If all of your YouTube videos that are related to copyright stuff in any way disappears tomorrow without you knowing, what would be left over? And I really do mean everything, right? Something like a Let's Play or reviews or reactions or anything that has copyrighted stuff in it is just gone one day. How many original videos would actually be left in your channel? For most of us, I'm sure it wouldn't be many. I know that for my channel, the only things I would have would be like crappy update vlogs from years ago and a couple of short films I made for college and that's it. If you have a YouTube channel, what would yours look like? Would you still have a sizable body of work or would most of your stuff be gone? Knowing that, how in my right mind can I call myself a content creator or a creative person if that is seriously all that I have that is truly 100% originally made by me? Now, don't get it twisted, don't get all mad and stuff, I can already see people typing up in the comments. This is just a hypothetical fake situation that I just made up, okay? I'm not saying that you are not a real content creator if you make like One Piece videos or Dragon Ball reviews or Let's Plays or whatever, this is just me playing devil's advocate with the situation, just, just roll with me on this. Just a little thought experiment. This is just something that I'm trying to get you all to think about a little bit. As much as I think fair use is a great thing that protects us, and as much as I think that reviews, video essays, and analysis videos, like Totally Not Mark's videos, or Mr. Morge's videos, and many others, they're all fantastic and important, all of it could be gone whenever these companies feel like it. You can yell fair use all you want, these corporations on multiple occasions have shown that they don't care about that and take videos down anyway and face zero consequences. Just look at Mark's channel. He tried his best to stay within fair use loss and he still got screwed over. So there's literally nothing stopping these guys from taking content creators down whenever they want. I'm sure everybody remembers Atlas and how they pretty much always threaten content creators and streamers if they upload content of their games when they first come out. Their reasoning is always to protect people from spoilers, and that's enough of a reason for them to take your videos down. That doesn't even have anything to do with copyright. They just want to avoid spoilers, allegedly. That, that's literally their reason. So, the situation with Mark's channel is pretty bad, but remember that videos have been taken down for far less in the past. Sometimes just posting a negative review of a game is enough to get taken down or suppressed. And with copyright being the default excuse for so many companies that want to take complete authoritarian control over what is being said about their products. 
And by the way, isn't it so ironic to see Toei be so overprotective about properties like Dragon Ball and One Piece, two of their most successful shows that isn't even theirs? It is a Ichiro Oda's and Akira Toriyama's manga series, and they're just adapting that into an anime. It's not even their own original creation. But here they are, they're acting like they're the ones that invented it and they're ruining channels over it. These takedowns are especially bad when legitimate and honest content creators are kind of a minority these days. It's sad to say, but how many YouTubers do you know that make professional level stuff where they always ask for permission and they stay within fair use or whatever, or, or they have like sources and credits in the description? No, not many. Those are very rare. The vast majority of us, even the super massive channels, just record ourselves playing a game or watching an anime and then they upload it assuming that we will be protected and that we won't get in trouble and when we do we just yell fair use and there we go that's the magic word that absolves us of any trouble and usually they are right it does work but again we're just going back to the same thing companies don't care and they take down the videos anyway and remember this as well for every popular person that exists there's hundreds of other copycats and clout chasers that want to get rich quick and ruin the community for everyone else by lazily stealing content. Always pushing it and uploading the full episodes of a show while just sitting there and staring at it or hiding behind their Patreon, where they charge for reactions, where they have the full uncut episode of an anime series. Now that is a lot more difficult for me to get behind. They think that because they're on Patreon and not on YouTube, they can get away with charging money to stream an entire show instead of people watching that same show on official websites, Mine is the boring face in the corner telling you to like and subscribe for doing nothing. Whenever companies take down videos or channels, these are the bad apples that they point fingers at, and it gives them a reason to screw over not just them, but everyone else within the same general area that has Goku in the thumbnail. There are YouTube channels out there that dedicate their entire careers to just complaining online about everything, and nothing has changed. We've had situations like these before where fair use is completely ignored and then people rally together to give these companies a piece of our mind. And still, neither YouTube with their broken content ID system or Toei have changed at all. It just keeps happening. As long as there is money to be made with this kind of content, it will continue to happen in the future. So, what are you gonna do about it? Complain on a video yet again and hope that people on Twitter stir up enough drama so that changes are made? Well, actually, that does kind of work, but only in the short term, and only if you're popular enough for people to care. If you're a small channel like mine, no one will come to help you, and I know from personal experience that literally nobody will stick out their neck for you if you get in trouble, because most of them don't even know that you exist. You have to just pray and hope that your channel doesn't get deleted for bullcrap reasons that you can't defend yourself from. I can't even fathom all of the smaller channels that just disappear off of YouTube because they get bullied into submission by these giant companies. The situation does feel pretty hopeless when you put it like that. If they don't screw you now, they will screw you later, and no amount of social media backlash will permanently fix the issue. Maybe they'll back off and fix the issues now, but what about later? Time will pass, people will forget, and we're back to square one again. So what can be done to avoid something like this happening again, or at the very least, minimize the damage that has been done? For the longest time, even before YouTube, there have always been people that have built their entire careers out of being associated with other things that don't technically belong to them. This can range from a Flash-based Newgrounds parody, to even Let's Plays or reimaginings of certain works. It's actually kind of rare to see creators spin off into their own creations that are entirely theirs. Most people these days are more than comfortable to build their entire channel and career by just inserting themselves into other works, whether that's a reaction video or talking about something that's popular. But there are some creators that eventually grow past that and make their own things, like original animations, music, or even full-on games or movies. Or hell, even within anime and, and talking about games and stuff, there are these massive uh, analysis and video essays that go far beyond just loving One Piece or Dragon Ball, but really extrapolating a lot of really great things about it, right? And, and, and analysis, right? Like Totally Not Mark and Mr. Morge and all of these other people, right? I would even argue that those are, you know, just so different from just watching the show that they're a whole new thing all of their own. One good example is the series Ruby that came from the Rooster Teeth channel. 
these guys already had a history of taking other copyrighted characters and making them fight with cool choreography or whatever. One could say that the entire reason anyone ever saw those videos is due to those recognizable characters being on screen. As much as I think Ruby is a terrible show, it's great that they eventually ended up making their own thing with their own original characters, music, and lore, etc. They could have easily done yet another Halo animation series or done some Dragon Ball Z parody or whatever, but no, they opted for something totally different of their own creation. Whether that ends up being good or bad, that doesn't really matter because no one will be able to take that away from them no matter what. They have a fan base that keeps them afloat and because of that, they have been able to expand beyond just their web series like making their own video games or spinoff series. Making your own original thing allows you that freedom to make those things happen. None of this stuff would be possible if they kept riding on the coattails of Halo's popularity or the popularity of any other work that they didn't create. There's also people that end up creating their own video games like Undertale or Stardew Valley because they were inspired by other games that they love. Instead of making a fan game or adding a bigger number to something that they already know, they instead opt for something original. And if that original work takes off, then it is your work that gets reacted to. It is your thing that people make let's plays and reviews and analyses for. This is a much better result than your entire career being tied to someone else's IP. Especially if the owners of that IP don't like you for whatever reason. And what about music? You can start making your own original music or your own art or web series or your own sketch comedy. Sure, you can take inspiration from other works like everyone else, but it will still be something that you created as a creator. Regardless of whether that ends up being good or bad, you are still much more of a legit creator than just, here's thing that you know, but now it has my face on it. And yes, I know that reaction videos and Let's Plays are not the same thing as a review or a deep dive analysis on a One Piece story arc. Totally not Mark's content and many other people's content should not be taken down and is just as legitimate as anyone else's review of these properties. But herein lies the detail. This is the important thing that you need to realize. We know that. Us, the community members, we realize that. But Toy Animation, do they know that? Do they even care about knowing that? As far as I'm concerned, they are not interested in telling the difference between a crappy reaction video or a full deep dive analysis like Mark's videos. If it has footage or pictures or anything related to their work, they will shut all of it down equally, no matter what the intention was. So let me ask you guys again, if every single video you've done that involves copyrighted work gets deleted tomorrow, what are you going to do? Are you going to pack your bags and leave or are you going to be creative and start uploading new things? For some people, unfortunately, they don't care about being creative. Obviously, Mark is not one of these people. I'm talking about many others. It's sad to say, but there's a ton of people out there, both popular and not popular at all, that view their YouTube channels as a glorified get-rich-quick scheme. A digital goose that lays golden eggs in the shape of Dragon Balls. And as soon as the goose stops giving them gold, these creators start throwing in the towel. They make these sad videos that their channel is over and that they might not be able to create more stuff if they get just one more copyright strike. But my question is, why not? Why can't you come up with something different and upload new things? Why do you have to be so closely tied to popular trending topic of the day? I mean, say whatever you want about people like the Nostalgia Critic, right? When he was getting into copyright issues, he decided to get some people in the costumes and recreate scenes from the movies that he talks about. And regardless of what you think of his videos, he had a problem and he found a way to fix it, unlike many other people that consider giving up the moment their reaction channels get in trouble. Just by looking at Mark's channel, you can already see him making videos about the Spider-Man movies and stuff, so you can already see him expanding and doing different things if the anime stuff doesn't work out, right? That's what a creative person does, right? If one thing doesn't work, they'll try something else. But unfortunately, there's so many channels that just don't do that. They just give up. That's probably because those creators have not developed any real talents of their own and are just making money off of someone else's blood, sweat, and tears so that they don't have to shed any of their own. This is why I posed that question before. How can I call myself a creator when I have to rely on other people to be creative first so that I can be creative right after that, right? As much as I hate Toei Animation for what they have done, I don't think the YouTuber space is entirely innocent here either. As I said earlier, for every one good content creator, like Totally Not Mark, there's a hundred other shitty ones that ruin the fun for everyone else. 
I want Mark's videos to come back so badly, and I want him to continue doing what he's doing. I don't want to see any other great content creators like Mr. Morge or Techie 101 getting screwed over like that as well, just because they talk about One Piece. I want all of them to keep on rocking with what they love to do. However, there is a harsh reality that we have to work with. And that reality is that giant corporations like Toei Animation and many others simply don't care about you. It doesn't matter how much you love their products. They will get rid of you whenever it is convenient to them. We've dealt with these problems before. We are dealing with them now and we will continue to fight these things long into the future. In conclusion, what happened to Mark is completely unfair and should have never happened. YouTube cannot continue with such a flawed content ID and copyright system that allows companies like Toei Animation to keep exploiting that system and getting away with this kind of abuse, where they can easily destroy someone's livelihood at the push of a button as soon as their usefulness has run out for them. I'm hoping this is a wake-up call to creators out there that have built their entire channels on just talking about one copyrighted thing like Dragon Ball, One Piece, or anything else. Everyone is at risk of disappearing at any time because of that. And believe me, not everyone has the luxury of complaining in a video and having every single famous YouTuber support you and come to your defense. The best advice I can give you now is to have a backup plan. Open up a Patreon and have a source of revenue that won't suddenly explode on you when your videos are gone. Many creators already do this, including Mark, in addition to selling merch, doing sponsorships, and live streaming, in which fans can donate to you while you're, you're live. And please, for the love of God, I know it's easy and fun to jump into an established work and make videos on it, like Nintendo games, a TV show, or an anime. But please, consider doing something else on the side, content-wise. Consider building an original body of work that doesn't involve any other copyrighted stuff. You'll be glad that you did. And you never know when that original creation will take off and be your main source of revenue, right? You never know. You never know if you're gonna make the next Ruby or the next Undertale or, or, or the next Walking Dead or whatever, right? It's not until you actually start doing it that you'll find out. And then when that thing takes off and you make a lot of money with that, you're then gonna find other YouTubers will come in and steal it for a reaction video as they get all the money and you don't. Think about the examples I gave, right? Like Ruby, indie games, independent musicians, and so much more. I I'm not saying that you shouldn't be making any anime videos anymore. If anything, I highly encourage that you keep making them because uh, they should not be taken down. Uh, a lot of these are definitely transformative works that fall under fair use. They should not be taken down at all. But what I am saying is that companies don't care and that they'll take it down any way if they want, all right? So have a backup plan for when that happens. Not if it happens, when it happens. Make something that is entirely yours that can keep you afloat whenever this copyright nonsense like this happens again. Whatever that content looks like is entirely up to you, right? Maybe you'll make music albums or make art or something. Who knows? I know that I will definitely start thinking about that from now on. But anyway, thank you for listening to what I had to say. I really do hope that Mark's situation gets resolved quickly, and I hope that you are doing very well during this holiday season. Take care of yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.